Hi, I'm Ron Bates, Senior Pastor of The Light Church. Thank you so much for tuning into our podcast today. I hope this message inspires you to love God, love people, and shine His light. Good morning, Light family. Good to have you here. Hey, how many of you have seen these? How many of you had one in your hand? If you have not had one in your hand, grab some on the way out. They're at the info desk, and they, I think they're passing them out as you leave. These are our, our Easter invites, and uh, you, you heard about the Easter jam. Man, that's something we're, that's new, but it is going to be a blast for families and, and kids. So uh, just join uh, everybody else and grab one of these and invite someone. Sometimes people are just waiting to be invited. Amen? Turn over to Mark 11. Palm Sunday, a celebration fit for a king, a celebration fit for a king. You know, maybe you've had celebrations before, and this was what was going on in, on Palm Sunday there as Jesus came into Jerusalem. It was a lot of excitement, a lot of anticipation, much like the celebration that we, our family, is getting ready to have. Uh, April the 18th is my granddaughter Ava's birthday. And uh, yeah, it's exciting, man, a big celebration we are planning. And I say we're planning, I'm not really doing much of the planning. I'm just going to be there and enjoy it. But let me tell you, there is some planning going on. A few weeks ago, uh, uh, Hannah and uh, Bev Bev and Ava, they got together and they were going to do planning. And I left. I left uh, several hours later. I came back to the house. They're still planning. This is going to be a celebration. We are getting packages to the door for stuff for this party for the family and, the, and this celebration of uh, the one-year-old that, that she'll never remember, but we will. It's going to be a celebration fit for a princess. Come on. Amen? It's going to be a good time, a big celebration. This was a big celebration coming into Passover week. Call it Passion Week when Jesus suffered. Passion meaning suffering. He suffered for us. But a celebration fit for a king. This was a time of Passover celebration in Jerusalem. Uh, they had heard about Jesus. They heard he had raised Lazarus. People came from all over for the Passover, but also to see Jesus. Anticipation was growing. This was the king that they had been waiting for, that had been prophesied about. So they were excited. They were, they were hopeful. So all this was going on. Look at Mark 11, verse 1. Now, when they drew near Jerusalem to Bethpage and Beth, Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sat He sent two of his disciples, and he said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and as soon as you have entered it, you will find a colt tied on which no one has sat. Loose it and bring it, and if anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Say, The Lord has need of it, and immediately he will send it here. So they went their way and found the colt tied to the door outside the street. They loosed it. But some of those who stood there said to them, What are you doing loosing the colt? And they spoke to them, just as Jesus had commanded, so they let them go. Then they brought the colt to Jesus, threw their clothes on it, and he sat on it. And it goes on in verse 8. And many spread their clothes on the road. They took their clothes and spread them on the road, and others cut down leafy branches. Uh, Luke tells us that it was palm branches. We see this in Scripture and other places where they would celebrate using palm branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then those who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, which means a shout of praise. Hosanna, we sang today, Hosanna in the highest. So they just gave him praise in the highest because he deserved it. Father, we come to you this morning. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, and Looking back now, we can truly cry out praise and sing Hosanna, praise to the Lord, because we see what you have done. Father, the eyes were, things were hidden, the eyes were blinded from those that were present at that time, but Father, we see clearly now, hopefully we do, Father, help us to understand the praise that you deserve, that Jesus deserves because of what you have done for us, Father, and we give you praise in Jesus' name, and everybody said... Amen. So point number one is, is palms of praise. And you know, we, we call this Palm Sunday, and I have some palm leaves here, and we call it Palm Sunday because that's what they did. They, they waved the palm branches, they took their clothes, and they laid them on the street as he came by. 
they laid their, this is, this is Ava's by the way. Anyway, they laid them out and they were celebrating. Can y'all just see the celebration? This was the original red carpet treatment as the king, as they were worshiping him, came in and they're praising and celebrating with their clothes and the palm branches waving in celebration of him. John 12 tells us it was palm branches and they're waving their clothes there. We see in 2 Kings where Jehu was made king, anointed king. And this, remember King Ahab, bad king. Everybody say bad king. Bad king. Jezebel, well, he was replaced by Jehu in Jerusalem and they celebrated. Listen, that was the time for celebration. We see where they laid clothes under him. It was a sign of, of, of celebrating him and honoring him and respect, recognizing him as king. It was a tradition as I said, the original red carpet, if you will, it was a loud and joyous celebration. Listen, we need to praise him loud and proud. Amen? Amen. Praise him. It was a praise fit for a king. But you see, everybody wasn't excited about it. The Pharisees, they weren't excited about it. Matter of fact, it was taking attention away from them. They were a little concerned because he's raising in, in, in status so much that it's gonna take away what they have. It, they had their own personal agendas. They were in tight with the Romans. They, were, they had a position, they had agendas, and, and Jesus was interfering with that position. And they didn't like it, so they, they were unhappy. John eleven forty eight 48 says, if we let him alone like this, in other words, if we let this go on, if we let him continue to rise in his fame, it's going to be the end of us. If we let him alone like this, everyone will believe in him and the Romans will come and take away both our place and nation. And, and what they said then, they went to Jesus and said, Jesus, tell them to be silent. Tell them to be quiet. We don't want to hear this praise anymore. Shut it down. And Jesus said something amazing at that point. It says this in Luke 19, 39. And some of the Pharisees called to him from the crowd, teacher, rebuke your disciples. But he answered and said to them, I tell you that if these should keep silent, this is amazing what he said here, the stones would immediately cry out. If these do not praise me, I'm going to get the praise that I deserve. This moment deserves so much praise that if they are quiet, the rocks themselves are going to cry out. In praise. That's how much this moment meant. That's how much it means now. He deserves that much praise. Let's don't be silent in our praise to him. If we're silent, he deserves so much praise that even the rocks will cry out. This right here would cry out a rock. Listen. I know you've heard it said before, but I don't want a rock to give God more praise than I do. Come on. A rock. You know, listen, you can't stop the praise. It's kind of like this. I think about this. You can't stop the meow. I'll explain. <laughs> you can't stop the meow. We have a cat named Mia. And in the morning, it's like an alarm clock. We're not ready to get up. Mia comes in our room and she goes, meow. Meow. Meow, come on. She keeps doing it. And we can, we can tell her, Mia, stop. Mia, hush. Meow. You know, a dog will stop. <laughs> I mean, sometimes you tell a dog, hush, be quiet. You know, they'll be quiet. A cat, they don't care. You can't stop the meow. <laughs> Until some point, I have to, I have to get up <laughs> and take care of the meow, the cat. I don't care what you, we've had her for years. She has us so trained, me, <laughs> so trained. And I, I'm just telling you, I don't care what you do, you cannot stop the meow. You cannot stop the praise. Come on. You can't stop it. You know, I don't know about you. I've never had a pet rock. Anybody had a pet rock? What good is a pet rock? A pet rock gives nothing in return. 
You know, it, it gives no affection back, but yet Jesus said it would praise him if we don't. You know, I see no good in a pet rock other than the fact that it does not meow. <laughs> Starting to look pretty good to me. <laughs> pet rock. But the rock would praise him if we don't praise him. You cannot stop the praise. God's worthy of praise. Listen, this time was so significant that he was going to get praise. He's still significant to get praise. Give him praise. But as he comes in, he's going to get the praise. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that he is Lord. Amen? Number two is this, humble and holy. He came in humble and holy. There were the palms. There were the, the clothes. There was a celebration fit for a king. But he came in humble and holy. You know, Palm Sunday involves the story of a donkey. We all know the story. He rode in on a donkey. And listen, the donkey makes a statement of its own. He came in on a donkey. And let me just tell you this. What you drive sometimes makes a statement. Come on. You can tell a lot sometimes. You can, not all the time. And let me just say this. I'm thankful that God gives me transportation. I'll take whatever I have. Come on. But if I have a choice... I mean, literally, if you, have, you ever had asked the question, listen, if, you, if money was no object, what car would you go get? Come on, we could name some stuff, right? And it would vary because it's our personality. You know, some, you, some people would get this, and some people get a you know, sports car, Lamborghini. Somebody, some other person's going to get a, you know, a one-ton truck, you know? <laughs> but it, it says something about you, you know, if you have the choice. You know, if somebody's in a van, SUV, minivan, they probably have a family, probably, you know. If it's a two-door sports car, they're probably single or, you know, empty nesters, you know, not a family that needs to... So you kind of tell something. I remember years ago, Ava and I, she, we had, our family was smaller. She had an expedition, a Ford expedition, big car. I think it was like 2006, gas prices went like $3 a gallon. Remember, that was like, are you kidding me? It went from like, a, like 50 cents a gallon up to $3 all of a sudden, you know, overnight. You know, it wasn't 50 cents, I'm just kidding. But y'all remember gas shot up, you know, and so we went, and, and she, want, she says, you know what, this, I think this is when the Prius came out, the Toyota Prius. And she goes, I think I want one of those. I'm like, you want what? A Prius? I don't want to be seen in a Prius. <laughs> it's your car, though. So she did, man. She, we went and traded it in. She got a Prius, you know. And, uh, you know, you, you can tell a lot about a person. Maybe you're environmentally conscious, you know, driving a Prius. That's Okay. I'm just saying, you can tell some things, you know. I didn't want to drive. No, I, I drove it, you know. It was a pride thing, I guess. You know, I had a reputation to protect. <laughs> it was a good car. You know, in 2021, we have a lot of choices in what we drive. You know, again, if, if we have the, the ability to get what we want, we have, there's a lot of choices. But in, in, in Jesus' time here, there were not that many choices. Donkey, horse. Donkey, horse. And he chose a donkey. It says something about him. It says something about this humble Savior. Zechariah 9, 9 prophesied about it. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. This is talking about Jerusalem. Shout. O oh, daughter of Jerusalem, behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation. It's in his hand, lowly and riding on a donkey. What was the statement making, the cult, the foal of a donkey? It was saying, I am your savior. I'm your king. I'm the one that it was prophesied about. It said something about him. Listen, it wasn't, it might have been beneath me to drive a priest. It really wasn't. I drove it, but it wasn't beneath him to ride a donkey. Come on. The king, the ruler, the son of God coming in on, on a steed, a stallion, this, this mighty horse. No, he humbled himself and came in on a donkey. It was a statement. Philippians 2, 5 says this. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. What he's saying here, he didn't say, what, me go down in the form of a man? What, I, I'm, God, I'm God himself, God in the flesh. He, no, it, what, it wasn't beneath him to say, Father, I'll do whatever you ask. You want me to drive a donkey? I'll drive a donkey. Come on, somebody. 
you know, you want me to humble myself, I'll, I'll do it. It wasn't beneath him, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross, not just any death, but death on a cross. He was willing to do for you and for me. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Yeah. Of those in heaven and those on earth and of those under the earth, you can't stop the praise and let every tongue, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. He was humble. The donkey said something about him. He was the one that was prophesied about. He was willing to humble himself and come in the form of man and give himself to die for you and I, even death on a cross. But it said something else the donkey did. Not just that he was humble, it also said he was holy. He was holy. He was a holy sacrifice. You see, you have to understand in the, in the temple, in the Old Testament, what they would do to prepare for the sacrifices, they had to consecrate the temple. They had to consecrate everything. It literally means to set everything apart. In other words, take every utensil, every item, the temple itself, and it can only be used for one thing, to consecrate, to set apart. Don't you ever, anybody have something you use? This, I only use this for this, you know? This is my, we have a birthday plate at our house, which is gonna get used pretty soon. It's a birthday. It says happy birthday. Every birthday, the person uh, who, whose ever birthday it is gets to eat off that plate on that day, all day long. It's their plate, their birthday plate, on their birthday. It says happy birthday. We don't use it for anything else other than that day. It's consecrated. <laughs> I don't know if it's holy, but it's consecrated. <laughs> but in the temple, they would have to do that. In other words, it, the the sacrifices, even though it was bulls and goats, it, it was still to be handled as if it was holy. Jesus was the only one holy and, and sinless but they had to consecrate everything. You couldn't use any of the utensils to touch the meat, the sacrifice, for unless if it had been used for anything else. The donkey said he was holy. It made a statement that he was consecrated. He was set apart. Exodus 40, verse 9, and you shall take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and all that is in it, and you shall hallow it and all its utensils and it shall be holy, set apart, consecrated. You shall anoint the altar and the burnt offering and all the utensils, the things that they would use, the hooks, all the stuff that they would use to touch the sacrifice and consecrate it to the altar. And consecrate the altar. The altar shall be most holy. The altar shall be most holy. Where you place the sacrifice shall be most holy and shall anoint the laver and its base and consecrate it. The donkey, in essence, was the utensil that was carrying the most holy sacrifice, you and I. It was consecrated. It was set apart. Mark eleven two. 2, we read it, and he said to them, go into the village opposite you, and as soon as you have entered it, you will find a colt tied, listen, on which no one has sat before. Why? Because this is the utensil that's carrying the most holy sacrifice for you and I to be sacrificed. Come on. So he was humble and he was holy. He was preparing his sacrifice. Hosanna, blessed is he, is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Uh, praise God in the highest. And they cheered for the Lord because he deserved all the praise and all the glory. He was our sacrifice. Number two is this. He was the Passover lamb. You see, it was Passover week. And y'all remember Passover in, in Exodus whenever God delivered uh, the children of Israel out of Egypt and Moses was there and they took the, the sacrificial lamb, the Passover lamb. This is why they came to Jerusalem to continue this, this ordinance, this Passover meal, to remember what God had done. But they, the instruction in Exodus 12 was that you take a lamb for each family and you sacrifice this lamb and you put the blood on the door and the, the windows, the lentils of the windows. And, and when the death angel came by, they would be saved and they would live. Jesus was the Passover lamb. His blood protects us from death. Somebody give him praise right now. 1 Peter 1.18 says, Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold 
from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. He was our Passover lamb. Isaiah prophesied of this 53, 7. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before its shears is silent, so he opened not his mouth. He did it willingly. And when I think about this Passover meal, you know, Jesus said, you know, I, I have, I have, with fervent desire, I have desired to eat this meal with you. He understood it was his last, the last supper. He understood uh, every year out of all the Passover meals that they had, this one was special. And perhaps at this one, it was so much more evident in his mind and, and visualizing that it was his body, his blood that was going to be shed at this, 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 this time, this moment. So when he went in the garden after they had prayed and said, Father, if there's any other way, let this cup pass before me. But nevertheless, your will be done, not mine. He, was, he did it willingly. He was obedient to the point of death, even the death on a cross for you and for me. He was willingly. He did it willingly for us. And you know what? He didn't regret it. Remember, he didn't consider it robbery. He, did, he, didn't, he, he, he didn't care if it, it, he took on no reputation. Coming in the, here's God himself coming in the form of man. He put all that aside and said, I don't care. God, if that's what you want me to do, I will do it because God so loved the world. Come on. He did this for you and for me. And, and, and I believe this, he didn't regret it. And not, not that he would ever do it again because he did it once and for all, but have you ever heard this? Have you ever heard this? Man, if I had it to do all over again, he would do the same thing because he did it willingly and he was aware. Point number four is this. When Jesus came in, they were cheering. They were waving the palm branches. They were, listen, everybody was happy. They were excited, they were thrilled. Man, this is the day that the Lord has made. Man, Hosanna in the highest. They were so thrilled, they were happy, but it was about to turn. And Jesus knew this, that, that this was Sunday, Palm Sunday, that he's, uh, that he's coming into Jerusalem. We know it is Palm Sunday. But you know what? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, he, he's teaching, he's in the city. Thursday comes along, you know what happens? They arrest him. All the people that were cheering for him didn't understand, I don't get it. Man, we were cheering. He's the one. He's supposed to come. He's going to save us. And why are they taking him away? Why is he not saying anything? Why is he not talking? What's going on? They didn't understand. And the cheers turned to jeers. Instead of praise and singing, shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, they began to say, crucify, crucify. There was a turn. There was a turn. If they only knew. You, you, ever, you ever said that, man, if I, only knew, if I had only known, the woman at the well, the woman at the well, the Samaritan, when Jesus comes and talks to her, and he, she's a Samaritan, he's a Jew, they didn't talk, and you know, it was odd that, that he had even spoken to her, much less say, would you give me a drink of water? And she didn't understand it, and she's like, why are you talking to me? I'm a Samaritan, you being a Jew, why are you doing this? And, and, and he said something, if you only knew, look at somebody say, if you only knew. John 4, 10, Jesus answered and said to her, if you knew the gift of God, if you knew, and who it is who says to you, who's talking to you right now, give me a drink, you would ask, you would have asked him, asked me, and he would give you living water. If you only knew, you wouldn't be asking why, you'd be, you'd be man, give me living water that satisfies. And I love this story because here's the way I see it. And Jesus knew her whole life. And he let her know, look, I, you know, go get your husband. I don't have one. And true, you know, you've had five, and the one you're with now is not. What he, was, what he was exhibiting to her was love and grace. And I believe he understood that all these things in her life had happened, and she was living an unsatisfied life. And I believe, well, this is my opinion, and whenever he says that to her, he's saying, look, if you'd ask me, you'll find what truly satisfies in me. I'll give you living water that you'll never thirst again. You'll live life satisfied. Give him praise for that. Praise. If you only knew, entering Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, they didn't know. They did not know God's divine plan. Yes, he was the savior. Yes, he's the king. Yes, he's gonna establish a kingdom, but it's a heavenly kingdom. It's an eternal kingdom. It's not one on this earth. 
if they knew that. It would change things for them. Luke 19, 41. Now as he drew near, he saw the city and wept over it. He wept, he cried, he was in tears. They're celebrating, they're shouting, they're happy, yet he's in tears. You know why? Because he knew even though they're happy now, it's going to turn. They're not going to comprehend everything that's going on in the supernatural. Now as he drew near, he saw the city and he wept over it, saying, if you had known, if you only knew, if you had known, even you, Jerusalem, Israel, my, God's people, if you had known, even you, especially in this day, I love that, this day, what's happening this day, your day, the things that make for your peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. For the days will come upon you when your enemy will build an embankment around you, surround you, and close you in on every side, and level you and your children within you to the ground, and they will not leave in you one stone upon another. This happened 40 years later, 70 AD, where the Romans came in and besieged Jerusalem, destroyed it, and leveled the temple, the second temple, to the ground. Jesus knew. He saw the big picture. How many of you know he sees the big picture? They didn't see the big picture. They just saw the right now. What's happening? And he's weeping because he understood, you th you're happy now because you think I'm setting up a kingdom here, but when they arrest me, when I go to the cross, when I die, you're going to be confused. Some are going to leave me. You're not going to understand. And he wept. If they had only known. Not leave one stone upon another because you did not know the time of your visitation. It means, visitation means to come and oversee. Didn't understand that God himself was coming to give his son to establish an eternal kingdom. The big picture. Jesus didn't meet their expectations of the ruler that they had hoped for, the, the king they had desired, the, the leader. He came instead very humble, lowly, it says, on a donkey. He didn't defend himself as they thought with his words. Taken into custody. They thought that he was over. I love the story there too. When they came uh, to get him. He's like who, are you, who do you seek? Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Nazareth. I am he. And they fall down. Just to show them that I'm doing this willingly. And you're not coming to take me. He asked him a second time. Uh, who'd you say? I'd be like uh, uh, John. We're looking for John. Uh, James. James here. Anybody but you know who. Willingly. You're not taking me. I'm giving myself. I'm offering myself for you. Not, not just the, the, those that knew him and loved him, those that didn't. Malchus, the soldier, right? That Peter cut his ear off, you know, trying to get his neck, hit his ear. That's true. I got this, Jesus. Oh, missed. Sorry. Peter, I got this. Step aside. Malchus, the soldier that comes to get him, he puts his ear back. Here you go. Let me fix it. Come on, take me. I'm going willingly. Mm. If you only knew. Exchanged for a murderer. Not a murderer. Exchanged for a murderer. The giver of life. Exchanged for one that took life. Willingly. Disfigured, beaten, mocked, all these things did not meet their expectations. They began to turn from Hosanna in the highest to crucify him, crucify him. Not the one we're looking for. But he was. When things didn't turn out the way they had hoped, they turned against him. You know what true faith is? It's when things don't turn out the way you hope that we still trust him. Come on. We still trust him. Because he sees the big picture. Do we now know what happened for our peace? If they only knew the things that happened is happening right now for their peace. And he's weeping. See, after the fact, we, we understand hopefully what happened. But do we still get upset when, because we don't truly know the things that he has done for our peace? The things that satisfy, if you ask me, if you only knew, you'd ask and I'll give you living water. You see, when we know, it helps us, it satisfies us, it, it brings us peace, it pleases God. So they celebrated. The king, as he came in, 
on Palm Sunday and then they discarded their praise and walked away. But a celebration fit for a king is still coming. Yeah. Revelation 7, 9, listen to this. It says this. After these things I looked and behold, this is John seeing a vision here in Revelation. After these things I looked and behold a great multitude which no one could number. So many no one could count them. Of all nations, tribes, people, and tongue, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes. You know who that is? It's us, the church. Yeah. With palm branches in their hands and crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to the God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Come on, give him praise. Yeah. A celebration fit for a king is coming again. All the angels stood around the throne and the elders and the four living creatures and fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen, so be it blessing and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. A celebration fit for a king. You see, when you know that he's not defeated, but victorious. That he humbled himself for us. That he became the sacrificial lamb. And he will raise, again, raise us again. Our cheers will not cease no matter what. And we'll give him the praise that he deserves. Stand with me. If you only knew the things that, made, that are made for your peace. If you only knew... We're victorious in him. Father, we thank you. Father, let our praise continue to the one who's worthy of our praise. Father, let us praise louder than any inanimate object. A rock, Father, let us praise you. Father, let us not be discouraged when things don't look the way we think they should look. Let us maintain our trust and hope in you. You're the one that satisfies, that has redeemed us. We know the things that make for our peace, that Jesus died for our sins, Father, and that we will rule and reign with him for eternity, not here on this earth, and that we could come and ask, Father, and you give what satisfies. We thank you for that. Go ahead and give him praise. praise. Hallelujah. Every head bowed, eyes closed. If you only knew. As he came to Jerusalem and they're cheering, he knew they were going to walk away. He knew they weren't going to understand. He knew they were going to be overtaken. And he wept because they didn't know what was happening for their peace. I believe his heart still breaks now for, the, for when we don't know what he's done for our peace. Sometimes we may withhold ourselves from entering his kingdom just because we think we're not worthy, and which is true, he's the one that's worthy. But did you know that he died for you? Did you know that he loves you with an undying love? Did you know that you can rule and reign with him for eternity just by believing in him? If you only knew. Even though you're going through things here on this earth, as we're told, we'll go through trials, tribulation. He overcame, and so will we, if you only knew that all it takes is for a heart willing to say, Lord, I believe in you, and I believe in your son, and I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Things change just like that. If you're here this morning and you'd say, Pastor Ron, would you pray for me? Or if you're watching online, I want to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I believe with all my heart that God exists, that God loves me, that he sent his son Jesus to die for me. And I want to receive him as my savior this morning. It's as simple as that. He didn't make it difficult. If you only knew that he didn't make it difficult. That if we believe in him and confess with our mouth, we'll be saved. If that's you this morning, I want to pray with you right where you are. If you're watching online, I want to pray with you right where you are. If you'd say, Pastor, I want to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Now that I know 
I want to accept him as my Lord and Savior. I want to pray with you right where you are. Would you just acknowledge that with an uplifted hand? And I, don't, I want to pray with you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray with you in just a moment. Anyone else? I don't want to miss somebody. Uplifted hand. I don't want to miss you. Hallelujah. God bless you. Let's say this prayer together. If you're watching online, just say it with us. Say, Father God, I believe with all my heart that you exist and that you love me so much that you sent your son, Jesus Christ. And I know that you love me and that you forgive me. And I repent of all my sins. And I know that I'll spend eternity with you because of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Give him praise. Praise. Uh, Hey, listen, just a moment. Pastor Jim's gonna come and dismiss. We're gonna have prayer partners. If you said that prayer, let us know. Come down and pray with someone. If you're watching online, let us know. Go to our website, get in touch with us. Give him the praise he deserves. Thanks again for tuning into our podcast. If you accepted Christ today, we are so excited for you. We want to invite you to text Born Again to 31996. We know that God has an incredible future for you, and we cannot wait to walk alongside you. If you would like to support this podcast and the ministry at The Light, you can give online at thelightcf.org. We love you, Light family. Have a great week.